everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here go away there's nothing for you today i'm here with shannon she is also a person that exists in the world Barely and <laughs> and i brought her on today because we are going to talk about wigs you know the video that i mentioned i was going to make like a month ago and never did sounds like something i'd do but she taught me pretty much everything i needed to know when it came to like the basics of wigs now we both kind of learned a lot together uh, but she was the one that was like, hey, just fucking wear a wig. And I was like, that's a good idea. Because when we started, it was before wigs weren't really a trend. Like, you didn't have a wig just to have a wig. You had a wig because you were bald. And that was it. So, um. Wigs have also came a long way just within a very short span of time. Whenever I started out, generally lace fronts would have about, like, this much hard lace at the front of them now it's common to even see synthetic frontals um i feel like in human hair that was always kind of a thing but for the synthetic wig world that is a huge huge step up the fiber quality has also improved dramatically color variation has improved a lot a lot a lot still pretty bad but it's better than it used to be it used to just be like a 1b or a 613 and that's it period period so uh, we're just going to try to touch on some main things, like a lot of questions I get, uh, cover the basics of like, well, where do you buy wigs? Should I get human or synthetic? And then maybe just throw in a couple extra tips that we personally have just as long time wig wearers. Um, right now I'm not wearing a wig. This is unfortunately my hair with some Tana Mojo ass extensions going on. I got tracks sticking out the whole nine. But um, so yeah, let's get started. So I have some notes here that I'm going to go off of. I, I have a fair amount of notes. I ended up writing full paragraphs, so I'm not going to actually go with these, <laughs> but I might reference them. Yeah, we can definitely hit the bullet points. So, um, as far as, I guess here I have some general tips. So, my number one, because obviously the thing most people have the issue with is should I get human hair or synthetic? And this, we were actually talking about earlier just in private conversation. One is not going to be better than the other. It has a lot to do with what you are looking for when it comes to your wig and how you style your hair and uh, things like, you know, do you live in an area of high humidity? Does it rain a lot? But when it comes to synthetic, all I will tell you is just make sure it's heat safe. And that's not really as much as an, of an issue as it used to be because 99% of synthetic wigs are heat safe. Yeah, I've had an enormous amount of wigs. I have only ever had one wig, and that was 10 years ago, that was not heat safe. They're generally all going to be heat safe. Um, even the textures feel a lot more like human hair. Uh, yakky texture and silky texture had always been a thing. However, now the technology has advanced a lot. So yeah, if you're not sure, most, uh, you know, retailers you purchase a wig from, it's going to give some kind of information whether you're buying it online or if you're in a shop, usually if you, they'll have, um, the display wig should have tags on them letting you know 99% of the time. If you see like a little picture of a curling iron or something, it's going to be heat safe. Most generally are heat safe up to like I, a certain I point. think they generally say 375, 400. You never really need to go that high. Um, yeah. I usually don't use hot tools directly on my wigs. However, heat is a necessary tool to prolong the life of synthetic hair. That's another point as to why I generally do tend to prefer synthetic. Human hair, once you've done, once it's lived its life, it's lived its life. There's no reviving it. Yeah, exactly. Synthetic hair, it's synthetic fibers. It's not going anywhere. You can steam it. You can put your oils in it. Um, if you don't have a steamer, literally spray it with water and take a hot tool to it. I mean, yeah, that's the best way to do it. Like, um, that's one thing I wanted to touch on is when it comes to styling, um, we've learned our whole life that you don't wet your hair and then straighten it. But with synthetic, it's quite the opposite. Like, you kind of need that technique in order to revive the hair and bring it back to life and put some shine back into it and get all the matting and the frizziness out you have to use water i personally i have a spray bottle i keep i don't have it handy because why would i that would just be advanced planning for a video which we all know i don't do i brought but... one but it's two feet away and i'm not getting it um so i take a spray bottle and i mix it uh fill it mostly with water and throw a little bit of fabric softener in that bitch because the number one mistake that people make some products you can get away with, but a lot of products that you are using that are meant for human hair are not going to work on your synthetic wigs because it's not human hair. 
they're synthetic fibers. They're going to need things that are meant for fibers and fabrics. So therefore, fabric softener is going to be your conditioner. Human hair products aren't going to necessarily damage that and that's been a misconception I've been seeing a lot lately. Um, putting a human hair oil in your wig or a hairspray, it's not going to damage your wig. It's just not going to do much. Um, oils, I do like to use a little bit of hair oil along with water if I'm just trying to straighten it and get like the doll hair feel out of it after it's you know kind of lived its life. It can come out. It can be rinsed out. It's not that big of a deal. You're not going to ruin it. It's indestructible. With that in mind, I often get asked when it comes to like when I did, I'm sure you if you've been on this channel long enough, you've seen like my seen hair wig tutorial and I get asked all the time what hairspray I use. What hairspray is going to be wig safe? Surprise! They're all wig safe. Wig hairspray, specifically for wigs, I feel like is the biggest like they're... There are some products... It's a scam. It's like, a scam. This little dude, for example, I have a few products for styling synthetic hair in particular. It's nice to have on hand. Uh, I do like it a little bit more than just plain fabric softener, but like it's not necessary and I don't really have any reason for owning it. It's good for detangling, but so is anything else. Yeah, like the conditioners and stuff, if you want to spend your money on it, just be safe, fine. But when it comes to hairspray, I know that there's like a lot of myths out there that it's going to break down the wig and this and that. Which I guess could be true. Also might depend on the synthetic fiber in which your wig is made out of. Most of the ones I get are uh, Japanese Kaneklon fiber. Which is going to be most of the wigs you find out there. Futura is super popular as well. Yeah. Um, I've been seeing more can I can't pronounce it. Yeah. More, of the, more of the K one lately. Um, but Futura was blowing up in like 2012. Yeah, that was like thing. the big, that was our first experience with it. Um, the Kanekalon has a lot more of a, um, it was the first one marketed towards more being of like that human hair feel. Yeah, it feels like it has a cuticle because there is some texture and some non-uniformity in the hair fibers itself, which makes it feel more like human hair because the cuticle is jagged and your hair is not going to feel silky, plasticky, straight. I don't see a whole lot of wigs that are that super doll-like, thin, plasticky, straight material other than like wigs off of Amazon. I do see it a lot in and cosplay wigs, party wigs, stuff like that. Even it's, a lot of the wigs I am. Yeah, um, can't, can't relate. Too persnickety. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm a lot less picky about wigs than her, but I'm the- she can work with everything, but even if it comes out perfect, she's still not happy with it. I can work with anything, and if it's like at least half-ass, I'm proud of it, and I did what I did, so, um, but yeah, any- any hairspray will do. It's not gonna destroy your wig, trust me. I have a ton of wigs up there behind you in the camera, and they're all caked in hairspray from like four months ago and they're still up there just vibing like they're fine. Whenever I first got into wearing wigs it was because I had lost my hair due to a medical condition. Um, due to my financial situation being in high school and my dad being a janitor I didn't have the money for human hair and much less did I have the money to buy a new wig constantly. So I, out of necessity I had to learn to make shit last. So I had to make a $30 synthetic wig last me like a year. And that was just what I had, and that's what I had to work with. So, when you're in a struggle, you gotta learn to work with shit. Yeah, and that's, you just do. that's a big part of it, too, is just over time, you're not gonna be perfect firsthand. No wig is gonna come out of the box just, like, looking absolutely amazing, and you're gonna be a freaking Kardashian. You have to learn how to work with it and how to do certain things and it's it's more than just you know tweezing the part and sticking concealer in it that is a huge huge misconception that i see very very often i've been on one about that especially recently because i've seen it a lot um i'm not sure where that started or why that started yes adding concealer to the part will help it look more realistic especially for me i buy um, wigs primarily marketed towards women of color, so I do need to add something to the part, especially if it's not a completely transparent lace, because my scalp is not brown. But simply tweezing the part, you're, you're just parting the Red Seas. That doesn't look realistic. You have this very bulky hairline and then just a gap. It doesn't look right. Um, whenever people reference tweezing their wigs, they're talking about like how you would pluck a frontal. So if your wig line is like this, 
you want to go in with your tweezers go like this section it out go in diagonals you want to thin out that hairline because that's naturally where human hair has the most breakage it's where you kind of tend to lose most hair and just your hair doesn't grow as thick around here it's just anatomy wise that's not how it works yeah like even for example like um if you can see how she worked yeah, with <laughs> the front yeah but still just for the sake of example so that this is her wig and how she's worked the, the and then if you look at my natural hairline that i have going on like i tend to uh it tends to be thinner like around my temples and stuff so you just have to think they even make things that you can utilize to m make a wig in your exact hairline like copy your hairline there's i'm never going to do that because i'm lazy but it's an option and now is like the absolute best time because we are in like the golden age of technology and you can just get on youtube and there are channels that will show you step by step like how you need to pluck a lace front wig or what you need to do to make a cheap wig look as good as possible because again contrary to popular belief you can't always just throw a headband on it and call it a day like i did with <laughs> my hair today I mean, there has been like viral videos of that sort that I've seen that I disagree with personally. I've seen people will say that you cannot pluck synthetic. While it's difficult and while it's not the same thing as plucking a human frontal, um, the hair will generally come out a lot easier on a human hair frontal. For synthetic wigs, we're talking about synthetic fibers, so they're literally melted into the lace. So it, they don't come out easy and they're knotted in there. So you really hard. And you absolutely have to take your time with that especially if you have a soft swiss lace um you have to make sure that it is secured to your wig block mannequin whatever you're working with i wouldn't recommend doing it on your head that's not going to work out for you but <laughs> yeah and if possible don't cut your lace do the plucking first it makes your life a whole lot easier go slow it's easy to rip the lace and after you rip the lace like yeah you're, you're screwed dude even that one I have sitting over there, um, there's a place somewhere in there where, like, I ripped the lace a little bit. I don't know if we can find it. I don't see it. Okay, maybe it was, maybe it was a different wig. Maybe I'm tripping. Oh, there's a little hole in the part. It's hard to see, so I'm not going to show it on camera. But yeah, it does happen, ripping the lace. So that's the only thing. But overall, human versus synthetic, you just have to think about the overall lifespan you're going for because although human hair people think it's automatically better because you can dye it and you can do this and that, the fact that you're able to do all those things opens up a lot more opportunity for you to destroy it, if that makes sense. Also, be realistic with yourself. Know who you are. If you're not willing to put up a lot of money for a human hair wig, even if you're getting the supplies and making it yourself, it can be set it is several hundred dollars bare minimum and there comes benefits with that so you can bleach the knots you cannot bleach the knots on a synthetic unit i disagree with the premise that you can just stick powder on it it just looks like powder on lace um it's not going to cover up the knots it helps but it's no human hair since you can't bleach those knots you don't have that little dots where the hairs are coming from so it does look like it's coming out of your scalp that's my main benefit for buying human hair also i buy human hair because i love to do fashion colors and most color blends and synthetic wigs i hate they i they don't make sense and i do not like them <laughs> so when it comes to styling that's another thing i get and we talked about uh things like using water to revive the wig and do that for straightening you know water and fabric softener and a spray bottle spritz it run your Hot iron, hot, uh, flat iron through it and... Comb after. If you yeah. don't use a comb after, you're just wasting your time. You have to follow it up, go in tiny sections, or else you're just matting the hair further and melting it into the knots. Yeah, exactly. The water thing, I have no idea why I started doing it. Turns out this steaming wigs is a drag queen technique. I have no idea why 15-year-old me decided I'm going to spray water on my wig and then I'm going to mm -hmm. straighten it. Yeah. But it is a uh, kind of ratchet quick way to steam it without having to get out of steamer and waiting for it to heat up putting a bag over it sealing it that's a whole lot of work yeah plus water um hot water boiling water is a common practice with synthetic wigs just because again it's a lot of that creating steam so a lot of people in order to uh curl their wigs or put uh curl patterns back in their wigs they'll do the boiling water method so, so you know like, one like this 
is one that you could literally just braid it after the curl pattern has fallen out and dip it in boiling water. I have a wig at home sitting in a bowl of water that I just did that to. So you can revive any sort of curl patterns if it's this kind of like deep wave sort of texture then just braid it, boil it, it'll be fine. Yeah, so hot water. I'll also, my handy tip, and again, this would have to deal with a, a lot of different factors, but with my wig, like that one I had, I don't know where I threw it. This wig right here, I use hot rollers on her, so that's how I get this kind of loose thing. I think hot rollers, if you, you know, provide it's a heat safe wig, are a great way to curl wigs if you're not trying to mess with boiling water, because half the time I'm lazy for that. Um, because most hot hot rollers don't get super duper hot and when it comes to using heat with a synthetic wig you need to make sure that you're holding the style so that's the only reason it's hard to use a curling iron is when you're using a curling iron you pull it out whereas your own hair is just going to bounce and snap back up the synthetic is going to be more weighed down so you need to hold that curl in place until it completely cools therefore that's why hot rollers are that perfect you know they're going to hold themselves until they cool so you can just set it and forget it and then you're good to go and then the style lasts for you know a week or so depending on your use of the wig and how often you're wearing it where you're wearing it but uh so that's a handy little tip yeah when it comes that's to curling another wigs. point i was going to touch on it it's not hair so don't treat it like that it is plastic if you melt plastic, then you it needs to cool down to retain that shape or else it's just going to come out like bendy and wonky. It's not going to work out. Um, even using curling irons and pinning them in place, I usually have an issue with the pins causing creasing. So mm -hmm. rolling yeah. in general, I do prefer. Um, there's a lot of drag queens who do tutorials on how to steam a wig. So you can just do a roller set. Um, I put it up on a tripod, put a bag over it, get it completely sealed so none of the steam is coming out and do it that way just because I have rollers and I don't have hot rollers. Yeah, because I'll show you the kind of, I'm glad you mentioned creasing because that is a big one. So I'm going to show the um, the hot rollers I have. I've If you find like one of my other videos on my channel, some of those videos have the hot rollers that I use linked in the description. Um, maybe I'll link them in this description. Who knows? You never know with me. I prefer um, to just get like 20 rollers for a dollar because I'm not going to buy hot rollers. Yeah, because yeah, regular rollers are going to do it too. I like the hot rollers just because I already had them and like they're heated. They're easy to throw in. I don't have to worry about wetting anything down or anything like that. Yeah. I, like I, I paid five grand like for a Cosmo things. school kit, so I'm going to damn well get some use out of it. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I really cannot find any of my roller pins. Another thing I meant to touch on when referencing human hair, be realistic with yourself. If you cannot afford very good quality human hair, realize that the lifespan of that and the quality of that hair is not going to be good. I would rather have a synthetic wig than a shitty quality human hair wig. 100%. 100 times over oh these extensions are a perfect example of that because these were some cheap extensions like i paid like 70 bucks for like a, more than enough to do my whole head and these just look how freaking ratty these look and they're so matted and tangly like this is not it's still human hair but human hair doesn't always mean it's going to be like top notch i i've never bought expensive human hair like i bought some from sally's and that's probably the most i've ever paid generally i'll do ebay or aliexpress um it seems like all of those companies get them from round about the same vendor there is some quality variation there but ali pearl is a great one the hair quality from there has been okay oh, ali grace is better than ali pearl but ali pearl is cheaper and it's i I found my clips I was looking for because we talked about creasing. So um, the hot rollers I have, these are the clips that come with them. And these don't leave any weird creasing in the hair. So that's another reason why they're perfect for synthetic. Also these, if you get like the bigger clips that go around the entirety of the roller as opposed to just sticking different pins in. I mean these are meant to, they're made to go with rollers of all kinds and not leave creases. Like they're just going to kind of cup the hair and the roller in this part here and it's not going to leave any because synthetic you do have to worry a lot more about creasing and stuff than you do with your regular hair like it's not just going to work itself out once you put that style in there 
it's in there unless you go to do something else to really get it out. And there absolutely is a learning curve. You can watch all the videos in the world, but it's something that you just have to do hands-on until you develop the skill. Oh, a yeah, lot of people definitely. won't mess with synthetic just because they don't know how to work with it. It's really not that hard. You just have to be, you know, and I know I'm not rich, so I'm not going to spend hundreds of dollars on human hair. I like my synthetic wigs. They last forever. Okay, brushing. I get asked a lot about just brushing wigs. Like, just brush it. I guess yeah. what kinds of brushes and stuff. Um, some people prefer like a looper brush or like some people I don't like brushes. a looper brush. Um, for hair extensions, I, I do, but especially on synthetic wigs, I, I do not enjoy that. Oh no. Uh, I like using metal bristles. Mm -hmm. um, Those are great for synthetic wigs. I've recently gotten into using just like nylon and bore bristle. Uh, the mixture of those two, I don't know, I like it. Generally, I try to stick with the metal bristle, so. Yeah, because I had that, that one metal bristle brush you gave me. I don't. Years but, ago. I unintentionally gave you, like, thousands of brushes of that format. Like, they just ended up with you. I was like, eh. Yeah, but they were great. Don't know where any of them are now, but yeah, they were like great when I had them. So, uh, lace fronts versus not being a lace front. Preference. Yeah. I feel like lace fronts are definitely all the rage and the hot topic right now. However, you do have to put in a lot more work to make a lace front look presentable. It's not something you can really just throw on your head and go. Uh, you, you can, I mean, go off, but it's <laughs> not going to look great. To install a like lace front with like a frontal, it takes me a hot minute. Um, I like to glue it down, use this stuff this stuff and guys can i tell you like if you really are you're going out to do something and you need it down like yeah but i did mine when i was just going to work and i thought this girl was like joking when she said all you need is that hairspray no literally if you just use that hairspray spray it lay it down take your blow dryer to it like that bitch is do on it there. on cool heat on low or else it will dry a little bit with a white cast yeah definitely. um hair glue is okay um, if you do have your own hair, I would try to work around doing that, especially since it's not a necessity. Um, if you're trying to install a unit to wear for several days, sure, but it may cause some damage to your edges and your hairline. Oh yeah, like honestly, I do have a lot of issues with my hairline that I didn't have until I started you know, doing a lot more of like lace front wigs and extensions and stuff like that. That, that stuff really will, especially if you're like me and you have very thin fine hair that's what i was gonna say um yeah it, not everything is going to be for everybody and we just need to realize that generally like if you have that sort of silky texture finer hair it's not going to grip it's not going to hold on to stuff and it's going to cause a lot more tension than it would on hair that curly hair has a different shaped cuticle so it's going to be a little bit more rough so it gives it something to cling to my hair whenever i have it is very like very thick and very coarse so it'll it'll hold anything yeah you can do a whole lot of stuff to your hair that i my hair would break in half just even looking at so like, i had a sew in for probably about like almost two months without having to retouch it and then i proceeded to do a sew in on myself uh yeah. it holds it pretty well for sure yeah my hair could never so with uh lace fronts i guess the main thing is be prepared to put a lot of work into it and then if you're going for something that's not a lace front i would just recommend getting something with some bangs whether it be straight across or side bang just really going to help you out in the long run a lot of these wigs that aren't lace fronts that do like the cute like middle part and like stuff like that they just, just like a piece of cloth <laughs> yeah they're not gonna lay flat to your head they're not gonna look right and you're gonna get like this weird like cone head thing now if you're top. wanting to wear it as like maybe a u-part half wig you can maybe find a way to finesse that but that's a whole other thing yeah and that also depends too because i've had wigs before i bought cheap ones with that intention like trying to make it work and it still did not work out no matter what it because sometimes it has to do with the shape of the cap or how big it is stuff like that you, so basically just be prepared to be crafty in any aspect also like buy your hair from hair retailers yeah definitely like um, this one is the exception she can do whatever the fuck she wants all the time but generally like the shape of the wig is going to be better i've seen a lot of people have issues with getting that wig bump and the cone head thing going on that can be reversed and it was a problem with wigs especially about 10 years ago 
Even um, waist fronts. Yeah. The bad um, the, or the lace one, bumping up in the front. Yeah. A way to fix it was to get like your mannequin head, um, turn the wig inside out and secure it very tightly with a scarf. Um, that helps. Nowadays, you don't really see that problem very much. I mean, this one I did have to take a hot comb to to kind of lay down the hunch in the back, but it's really not that big of a hunch. It's just from where it goes from frontal to wefts. So I tell you guys all the time that when you ask me like where I get my wigs from and this and that, I, number one, half the wigs I have, I don't remember where they came from, when I got them, what happened, because a lot of my wigs I've had for like six plus years. So it's been a hot minute. I remember the name of every unit, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> She'll tell me what wigs I bought. And I'm like, no, that's not it. And she's like, yeah, because it was this time. I remember you were wearing that outfit and we did that thing. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And then she'll tell me the exact, the brand, the name of the wig. The, the color The exact numbers. color variant. That's like, one. I feel like it would be intimidating to someone to go on a wig site and not know what like F slash 4 slash 27 slash 30 means. Oh, yeah. That's it's, a good thing to cover. It's a, it, that shade in particular is just like a honey dirty blonde. But the, each letter and number represents like a certain color and then they just kind of throw And the them. letters generally will be, um, the style in which it's colored. Um, it's not completely uniform and it's not uniform through all brands. Even 613s will vary from brand to brand and 613 is just going to be like your bleach blonde. Yeah. So that's a good thing to like go off of. I will not buy a wig unless I can find a tangible source of the photo of the wig. Websites will not have a photo of the wig in every color, believe it or not. That is not something that happens ever. Um, even cap construction, I can never seem to find. Nowadays, it's getting better with the YouTube reviews, but it's still something to be wary of. If you are unsure of the colors and the color variations, um, Google them. Google every single one, Google it with the brand's name followed after it because it will vary from wig to wig and it will vary from brand to brand. Like, I didn't grab that wig on the floor, but that one is a 99J, so it's a burgundy. It is um, a dark brown, maybe reddish, and it has two burgundy streaks in the front. To me, that's not a 99J. To me, this is a 99J, but even this was listed as like a red, so. Yeah, that's... That's a 99J. That is a 1B with a little bit of Yeah, but the, the name of that color is just a 99J. Yeah, I they do that sometimes. That. Like, sometimes it'll be... I've seen that before with, like, uh, you know, blonde wigs and yeah. stuff like that. Like, they'll say, like, okay, it's a 613. Quality of hair and color. That's weird, and it's a thing. Yeah. So, 613s, regardless if it's human or synthetic, of course if it's human, it's been bleached out, so it's going to be not great feeling. Um, These even, were fried when I got them. Yeah, they're, they be doing that. <laughs> yeah. But darker shades, especially your 1 and your 1B, are overall going to be better quality. I've seen it uniform from brand to brand, from wig to wig for years I have no idea why. Probably just has something to do with the coloring process. Even though it's synthetic, you're still using like certain dyes and processes, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure there's some kind of science to it. But fashion colors, lighter colors, they tend to tangle, snag. Um, they mat up a lot easier than your darker wigs. If you're unsure on the color charts, uh, the letters preceding the color numbers will also be an indication as to how that color is placed. P will generally mean a piano, so it'll be scattered throughout the wig. Um, DR is dark root, so it'll be generally a number one to number four color root, uh, followed by the color F is just frosted, like frosted highlights. There's a bunch of them. Google them. Yeah, like I said earlier, there's a lot of resources out there for you, so if you're new to this and you're just getting into it, you're going to have a lot easier time than like what we had when literally it's just me and her and you know nobody I couldn't afford we know. to get wigs from the beauty supply store so i had to track them down online and i had to you know do my own research and go from there and yeah. that was a very bleak time there was because it's not like we had friends that wore wigs yeah. or like any I like just, i said I it was wasn't a trend i was just a ball headed actual wig retailers versus like amazon and shit i yes. touched on that a second ago uh, i touched on the hair quality the format of the wig 
and hair itself I already mentioned but generally if you get one of those wigs from like powder room wigs even um Amazon wig is fashion Webster wigs all of those are gonna have a similar retailer I've seen wigs from all of them and they look almost identical while it is nice to have the transparent lace that is more universal so if you are of a deeper skin tone you can use some lace tint that is a perk however the hair is generally very 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 bulky it is enormously thick nobody's hair grows like that especially to the tip it this one is the sensational cloud nine wig and it does get thinner towards the bottom because that's what you want you want like a taper because that's how your hair that's is going to naturally grow yeah and the hairline even though wig straight out the box will never have a great hairline generally you're going to have a better one from an actual wig manufacturer than they are real wig manufacturers but they're not good ones i trust sites like elevate style sam's beauty ebony lines i've been ordering from them for years and the brands that they carry i am way way more partial to than like charisma off amazon that's trash yeah because i've i've bought a couple of those to experiment with before and there's just no making them work if you're on amazon and you did find what seems like a good option for you just because it's on Amazon or something like that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to automatically be bad because there are legitimate wig retailers that sell through Amazon just because it's a popular platform yeah. for that sort of thing. So you can find brands like I bought Bobby some Bobby Boss, Boss and, Boss like and um, Sensational units off there. There generally is an upcharge, but uh, especially during the pandemic, I wanted it to be fast. Yeah, so that's the number one thing. So just do a lot of research when it comes to brands. Um, obviously you're going to have a much easier time finding those better brands if you go specifically to a wig retailer website. But if you are on Amazon, like, if you happen to see something like, oh, I've heard of this brand, like, I know it's good, maybe look into that. And then when it does come to, like, some of the cheaper things, if you are determined to get this $10 wig and make it work, like me, just again, be prepared. You absolutely can. And I'm not in any way trying to say like, it's going to be trash, you're going to look like shit. But for me, I am very, very picky. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I know I would personally be insecure about. Another thing is the retailers that I buy from are generally marketed towards women of color. So an example of that being an issue for me personally would be the lace on these units. Recently, the HD lace and the transparent lace units have blown up. However, the lace on them is generally going to be a bit darker. This one has a little bit of powder on it, but they're going to be darker. There's no way to lighten it. Yeah, it like that wig right there, I'm not going to be able to wear without my fake tan. There's no way. I have watched hundreds of hours, I'm sure, of wig reviews. Every wig I'm mildly interested in, I look up reviews on and try to find every picture of that that I can, hear different people's opinions on it. I have managed to find a few different brands. I ordered from a few different ones just to see which one would be the lightest for me because that helps me. <laughs> Bobby Boss tends to have the lightest transparent lace in an HD unit that I have found. Zuri Sis also has a very very light one so if you are of a fair complexion those two are great ones to go to i also would recommend getting some sort of frontal it's just going to look more realistic it's going to be easier to lay down and it allows you more style variation versus i brought this one out for this kind of example specifically wigs like this i i will not wear i cannot wear i cannot stand i they're generally going to be quite a bit cheaper but if I want to be able to part my hair wherever I want. Yeah, and you, it's not really a lot of people think, well, why don't you just turn it over to the side? It, it's it's just going to look like a wig turned to the side. Like, it's still not going to look good. Yeah. Um, not to mention, it's not going to be comfortable because... And there's no way to simulate real growth with this yeah. nub of lace. Even yeah. if you glue it down, it's not going it's not going to be the most realistic. If you just really love the color and style and you want to spend 10 bucks on a wig, go off, I guess. Um, speaking of price, I just wanted to go ahead and throw it out there that expensive doesn't necessarily mean better. So we talked about that a little bit with like the human hair versus synthetic. But just because this synthetic blonde wig is $50 and this one's $32, it has a lot more to do with like marketing too yeah um if it's marketed towards a certain niche they will mark it up a lot generally brands like trust john renew john reeves they're going to be marketed towards 
older white women who are either losing their hair due to natural causes or due to some sort of illness, some sort of underlying medical condition, and they are desperate, and those brands know that. So the structure of the wigs are not entirely that different, which is a common misconception that I see. People will spend $500 on a synthetic lace wig because it's marketed towards their demographic. Blows my mind. The color blends on them are nice. I'll give it that. That is not worth a 500% markup on a wig. It's synthetic hair with lace. That's yeah. it. Look at the materials that you're getting. It's the same thing. Um, generally, I have seen a lot of those wigs up close and in person. They're very, very similar. There's a few little differences here and there, but it, there's a million different kinds of wig cap constructions anyway. Yeah. The monofilament top, I would rather have a silk-based lace wig. It just looks better. The monofilament feels scratchy, it's not that nice. The lace that they have on the lace fronts from those brands are like, it's hard lace that's like scalloped and you don't cut it off. I have no idea. And it's like a 12 inch synthetic <laughs> wig will sell to these people who don't have the information, who are not educated in the area, who don't know any better, who are desperate because they want their hair. Yeah. And I, I, I think that shit's real dirty. But there are more fashion brands that do it, like the Charisma brand and like Powder Room wigs. Um, the wigs are fine. I'm not insulting the brand, but like, you're getting scammed. Yeah. $100 for a synthetic wig is bullshit. So this Don't is why I brought her on here, because she's going to make a lot of points that I never even thought about. Okay. Like, I've ordered from, uh, not Powder Room. I've seen those, and I 100% think that they are trash. But wig is fashion. That's where I got that white one from. At the time, I never had transparent lace, so I did like it. But the lace eroded. The um, cap construction came apart very quick. The overall hair texture is terrible. It's just very, very fine Barbie doll, like, tangly hair. Mm. Oh, okay, so the one, because I guess we're going to have to go, the camera's going to die, something's going to happen. Okay, so the last thing I just wanted to throw out there is um, you, you got to wear like wig caps and stocking caps and stuff like that, and some things are more damaging than others. Straight stocking caps, which do I have one handy? Mm. So stocking caps are the ones like these that are like that pantyhose material, covers the whole head. This is going to do, um, a lot of it's going to like, smother your scalp a lot more it's gonna it's not as breathable you know and it's going to be a lot tighter and rub a lot more on the hairline so i prefer the netted wig, wig caps which are the ones that look like that fishnet material it's a lot more breathable they're more comfortable and when it comes to the caps like this if you are wearing it you want to kind of set it behind the ear so that way it's not completely on your hairline because this will rub your hairline straight off like i know that from experience so trust me Another and then um do you have your wig band or it, it's over on the floor somewhere i have a wig band somewhere but um they make these like velvet, velvet wig and you bands. gotta push it in one direction so there's friction yeah but they are super useful and will keep your wig from slipping and they're gonna they're not really gonna I don't know how to explain it because it's still something like kind of on your hairline but not really it's not to the extent of the stocking cap it's, like, not, it's not like not constantly stay. moving it stays in one place so yeah, it's exactly. not causing that friction and it's not causing erosion because that's what aside from the the smothering of your hair follicle it's a lot of that friction that's going to rub your hairline away another note on stocking caps if you're going to get a frontal human or synthetic and it's going to have the uh, enormous amount of lace that you can see through to make it look like a real scalp uh, get a nude cap closer to your skin tone put whatever foundation or concealer that you have on it if it doesn't match well if you're worried about that line of demarcation i recommend doing the bald cap method especially if you have hair if you're bald you can do whatever the fuck you want <laughs> but the bald cap method will help a lot all you need is your stocking cap and you're got to be glued sprayed i'm talking too much and taking up no you're time. giving like good info i just have like shitty things okay so that's pretty much everything i know that's like a lot of information to get if you're like a beginner with wigs a lot of that probably just sounded like a different language to you i remembered one okay your wig's gonna look like a wig yeah. Do not get a wig expecting it to look like Kylie Jenner or Kim Kardashian on the red carpet. Those wigs are multiple thousands of dollars. They are probably made of donor hair. They are handcrafted. They probably had somebody, uh, what like, is it called, do the actual ventilation of the lace 
themselves. Mimic the hairline of that person. Like, a lot of these wigs, 99% of the time, are being custom made for that celebrity. I've also seen a lot of very expensive wigs advertised, like, on Facebook that have, like, the knots bleached and it's plucked to perfection and it's great quality hair and it'll take you to a website with, like, a $50 synthetic wig. Yeah. That's a Fake. scam. Don't be dumb. Yeah. But with that being said, yeah, it's gonna look like a wig, but if you're that concerned about it, 99% of the time, when you walk out on the street, nobody's really gonna think anything of it. Nobody cares what you do. Yeah, nobody cares. No one pays attention. I've had some of the cheapest, crappiest, like, party city wigs that I've worn. Just... People love weird shit. Oh, they... and they'll be like, how'd you get your hair that color? She'll and be like, wearing, like, dead serious? what are the, just, what's the ones that the ravers do? The dreads. Oh, the synthetic? No, like, ones. Just straight up tubes. Never mind. Oh, yeah. Uh, people cyber locks. Will, people will see cyber locks and be like, oh my gosh, how'd you get your hair to do that? People are dumb. <laughs> so you'll be fine. It, like I said, just do a little bit of research. Find you something. If you want to learn more about wigs, maybe start off with like a cheap one that you don't really plan to like wear out just to get some practice on. That's like something really handy before you go out and buy like your new favorite wig. As a general rule, um, $60 is my cap for a synthetic wig. Human hair, if I'm making it myself, whatever. But 60 is my cap for a synthetic wig. If you're spending any more than that, you're being scammed. Yeah, but it also, if you think like $60 sounds like way too much, just remember while expensive doesn't always mean better, sometimes you really do get what you pay for. Like I do not expect much from a wig at all if I paid less than $30 for it. Also, the only reason that I'm comfortable spending that much is because I've been buying from these same brands over and over for several years. So I know the quality that I'm getting. I'm aware of the cap construction. I'm aware of the brand's general pros and cons, which every single wig manufacturer is going to have a whole list of those. So make sure to do this. Use your resources. Get on YouTube. You know, do some research. There's tons of people out there that do like really good tutorials when it comes to wigs and things like that and you'll be fine but overall just have fun don't stress it's not that deep and i guess we're outy five thouty if you have anything you want to say to the people don't be stupid generally good advice okay well thank you guys so much for watching all right i love you guys have fun be safe look both ways before you cross the street and i will see you next monday bye I gotta get into Persona. Customer service voice. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit, it's I midnight. Keep, yeah, I know. But I keep getting uh, getting. I thought it was like 8 p.m. <laughs> it was like four hours ago.